Hello, welcome back to Soul Eater Anime Review. Yeah, I had to start this one over because I screwed up, so, yeah. This one I'm covering episodes 18 to 28. Now, I originally stated I was going to do 25, but it's not so I've got 28. Yeah, and covers, like, three arcs. Uh, 18 to 25 covers a fight to the death at the anniversary celebration. 27, 26, 27 is... The trial enrollment and 28 is the bodyguard. And these 11 episodes cover at least 13 chapters. Fight to Death covers 16 20, 23. Trial enrollment covers 24 26. And bodyguard covers 27 28. Fight to Death is the first like, really big arc. That's one I've been building for quite a while. Mm hmm. Medusa sets her plan out, and she just takes the school hostage. Excuse me, with the with Free and Crolla. I should point out, Crolla is a, is Medusa's child, and it was specified. It was even asked the Black Dragon what gender this this person is. As far as I know, Crolla's gender has never been specified, but looking at Crolla, Crolla looks like a boy. Yeah. Looks like a boy. Could be a boy, could be a girl. I just kind of wish even the even the manga was probably confused about this as well. It's like, yeah, this is Medusa's child, and yet this gender is never specifically specified. Yep. Yeah, so they pretty much have this old big fight, and they also get juiced to the main villain in the series, Abra. I had to look up the guy who voices him, but yeah, the main villain of the guys makes his first appearance in the anime. First appearance is putting his skin on. Yeah, apparently when he died, his skin he he got skinned alive. I don't really know why in the world that Death did that for, but he did. Yep, Lord Death did that for some reason and stuffed him in a bag. Yeah, and he spends like a good like one episode, he spends like a good like ten minutes putting his skin on, which I'm like, you are thinking, ew, though he does put some new, he does turn some of the skin to clothing, which, that's something. Also, you gotta praise the anime for not showing his, well, his groin, despite the fact the guy is butt naked. I'm not kidding, he's butt naked. <laughs> also, I forgot to point this out, though, that this was uh, from early on, uh, in the last episode, that, in, in the last part, I forgot to point out that, Blackstar is also kind of a peeping Tom. He loves peeping in on his on his, his female weapon. Yeah, he actually does a couple times. First time was when she's by herself, and she kind of knows he's peeping, so she just throws a rock at him. Does it again when she's with other girls. It's like, what the heck is up with Blackstar? Why is he trying to peep at, his, at, at the woman who's his weapon? Why is he trying to peep at her butt naked? I mean, Soul doesn't do this to Tamika. Nope, at least he has decency. Black Star is a pervert. Yeah. Even though that does annoy his wife, but she still cares about him. Despite him being a pervert. And a peeping Tom. I'm looking up to see who um who voiced him. The the guy who's the main antagonist of the series. Because well, this arc pretty much introduces him. And he's woken up via, via black blood. Yeah, he's injected with this thing, and that actually wakes him up. After 800 years of sleeping. Not kidding. Oh, yeah. Look, so, Lord Death he used to love wearing heavy clothes. Not kidding about that. He is voiced by... Uh, the, the guy's name is Astra. And he's voiced by Chris Patton. Yep. I get a chance to make a list for him, like, what... Things I've seen him in. Look at his uh his well his, his list of shows he's been in, and I'm looking. I'm not seeing much of anything that this guy has been in. But yeah, I'm looking at it like nope. There is nothing for this guy aside from this one series. There is like nothing else this guy has been in. But yeah, he does have a brief fight with death, and. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, while even though that the kids do defeat Free and Crolla, it just 
Well, even though that they're imprisoned by free, but that Professor Stein, along with Mitska, Soul Eater, Black Star, Toxky, uh, Def the Kid, Liz and Patty all get freed to take on this thing. That basically it's a big battle. Even though they kind of lose, even though they kind of do beat the people. Oh yeah, and also M Mika's father get, gets involved, transforms his weapon for Doctor for Professor Stein. And they defeat Medusa by slicing her in half. Though she turns herself to a snake and she takes over a little girl named Rachel later on. Yep. So this was probably by far, at this point in time, probably the biggest sort of whole series that was animated. Mm -hmm. Though there were arcs that were, that were longer than this manga. But, yeah, this was anime form. This was the biggest arc of the whole series. And it's something, though, that after the next few episodes, it's it. Yeah, I don't know why in the world this was. We're 18 episodes after, after, at least about 11 episodes after this arc wraps up, they stop adapting the manga. Don't know why, but they do. All right, now let's talk about the trial in Rome. It basically, Crowley surrenders, and then later on, like, and they also also death tolls, um, Sid to call all the death sites. Yep. Calls them all across the world. Come here so they can discuss exactly what they're going to do about Astra. Yep. And only about four show up. And the people I do have them in my list are Mary Major voiced by Colleen Chickenboard. Uh, ch uh, Clockenboard, who voices Luffy in One Piece. She also voices. Uh, the kid, she voices the, pretty much as the voice of Gohan from DBZ. Urza Scarlet from Fairy Tale, and Rocky Rocky Benchuni in Tokyo Ghoul. Oh yeah, I do have um as as you know, Yumi. I think this one, yeah, this is the other woman who's part of the group, uh, voiced by. Pernina Pelina, who also voiced Julia from Fairy Tale, Tony Tony Chop from One Piece, Chatsu Puar from DBZ Kai, though this is also the person who voices Puar in Super, and also voiced Toka from Tokyo Ghoul. The third one is Justin Law, I can't the other one. Voice Erbao, who voiced Trunks from DBZ, So from Yu Hakushu, Sanji from One Piece, Key from Fairy Tale. Yep. The first one is, uh, Marjorie is just a woman with an eye patch, and she really wants to retire, and she wants to get married so badly. Yeah, kind of reminds me of Urza from, from Fairy Tale, where, you know, where, where she got a, a wedding dress, and they poke fun at it later, um, that says, uh, you're, you're desperate to get married, aren't you? And she says, no. <laughs> She's really one of the wedding dress. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the same thing with Mary. Yeah, it seems like right after she comes desperate, she wanted to retire. Yeah. Though she later becomes Professor Stein's substitute weapon. Um, what's her name? Asta pretty much functions like behind the scenes. And she has like this ability to create maps. Kind of like Zipper from... I think what was his name? Oh yeah, Toriko. And Justin is a guy who worships death. Even though he dresses like a Catholic priest and wears headphones with death's face. On the on the earpieces. Also, the you put fun in his face. It his basically has where he he has different mask. So apparently, 800 years prior to the show, he had different masks that scared little kids. Even though he tried to talk to them, try to be a nice person, but they scared him. Yeah, so they try to formulate a plan. Of course, uh, everybody's so there's some injuries. Black Star is like heavily. He's probably, probably the most injured. Like, Death the Kid is probably the only one who came up unscathed. Also, during this particular arc, well, in the first part, you have Mika and Saul basically just at, at the party. M Mika wearing this okay-looking dress. Of course, Saul is wearing a suit. Black Star is basically, well, he wears a suit and tie, but his tie is undone and his uh, shirt is untucked. <laughs> Which I'm kind of like... Uh, Taka, you live with him, and you let him dress up, you bait, you tell him, you bait, you allow him to go out like this? 
Yeah, he says the only reason why I came was for the food. <laughs> Which is weird. Yep. So, yeah. And also, there is a dream sequence. Now, this is kind of like built off what happened like an arc back. When so re told Dr. Medusa, this is of course he found out before, before she was a witch. Of course, they later definitely, of course, they found evidence to prove that, yep, she's a witch. And they dance in Soul's head uh, first, and then they actually dance in Soul's head. Mika wears his beautiful looking black dress. It The way it looks, it looks like something out of, uh, of a noir crime drama, like like uh, some you see, like one of those noir crime cl uh, uh, nightclubs. Yeah. <laughs> It's so interesting that this dancing in Soul's head basically allows him to use Soul Resin so smoothly. Yep. But it's a fun little arc. Crawler and the Troll Trial and Roma thing, he, they just go to a village, makes golems, fight, fights one guy, and of course, Crawler's Ragnarok a character who was bigger before, is like smaller now, and he's like a pretty nice person. And Mika is one that basically uh, softens him up a bit. Where she calms him down and treats him like a friend, even though when he tries to write poetry, he writes sad poetry where, like, almost everybody who reads it goes to the corner and says, like, cry. It's like, like, Patty, Liz, like, everybody, even Sid. It's so funny. It's like Sid, ever since he became a zombie, it's like he's some kind of commando for the school now. That's basically what his job is being a commando. It's just so funny. <laughs> Of course, this layer kind of leads into what happens in the next arc, Bodyguard, which has Blacks to have a rematch with the Samurai he fought back in Episode 2. Yep. Have a rematch with him, and have a pretty decent match, even though he kind of loses. But Sid was actually intended to get this device, like take pictures, get the blueprints, and destroy the device. Lucky enough, just Blacks are just happen to come there, just by sheer coincidence. And he's like, okay... Even though this was not the plan, I'm down with a distraction. Yep. And <laughs> it is just so interesting, though, that... And they bring back the character Angela. She's just a cute little girl. And they, they and later on, she, she does become part of the school, and she gets put under the protection, which is nice. I'm trying to think, though. Yeah, that's really it. Also... In the previous arc, we introduced to Medusa's sister, who was Krola's aunt. They never referred to her as that. So they're like, oh yeah, you're my sister's kid. And she just like, oh yeah, I'm also your aunt. She does not say it at all. Like, Krola doesn't say, like, with Medusa and mother, does that make, make you my aunt? I'm like, what, was there a line that was cut here or something? Like, like in the script for this episode? Like, you could have mentioned that, yeah... This this woman, uh, uh, Arachne, I think her name is. She, she's one of the Gorgon sisters. Look her up. Uh, yeah, her name is Arcania. Yeah, yeah Arcania. She, uh, yeah, she's Medusa's sister, and her sister. she is Corolla's aunt. And I'm like. Why couldn't they mention that to Corolla? I'm like, you could have mentioned that to her. Like, I'm sure a lot of people probably have this little thing. It's like, oh yeah, Medusa's my sister, and you're her kid. That makes me your aunt. Something simple as that. I'm like, why wasn't that in the anime? It's just like so bizarre. I don't remember this because it's been a little while since I read the manga. So... There are some things I remember from the manga. This this particular arc I don't remember very well because it's been a while since I've read it. But yeah, I just don't know why they they couldn't just bring that up. Like maybe like a line or two they could bring up. Like maybe Corolla could have said something about it, or Mika could have said something about it, or heck, it could have been um, Arana herself. Also, I've, I've got to bring this up. Um, during the during the first arc, uh. Me, me and her father were dancing because Soul thought it was a good idea for the parent to bond with, with a child. And he's like, he's like, he did tell, he tells Mika, like, I did really love your mother. It's like, yeah, and she's like, then why did you frequently cheat on her? <laughs> good point. Well, it, it, it's a good question that was never answered at all. And I get the reason why Spirit is creepy around his daughter. At least he's not trying to, you know, 
do something sexual to her, which, thank God, he's just creepy to be around. Well, whenever he's around Mika, he's, like, so obsessed with her life. And... <laughs> And also, he doesn't say thank you to he doesn't say thank you to Soul for protecting his daughter from being sliced up. Also, um, I think it was yeah, it wasn't it was in the trial room. M Mika got frozen, so Crowley had to do a lot of the fighting for that arc. Yeah, and this guy who apparently lived for like 800 years, he apparently got he just he just he's just a bored blacksmith. Yeah, and he works for her, and he get, and they go this nice looking stretch limo, and what does he do with the limo? He slices the top because he doesn't like cram spaces for some reason. I'm like, I don't know why. It's so bizarre. I've been in limo before. I never probably cramp a limo. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, so that's it for this video. Not much else to say. Pretty good story arcs, though. The next video is going to cover. Excuse me. Uh, so, 29 to 36. I know it's only just eight episodes, but I kind of want to cover the last episodes that were adapted for the manga before I get to the episodes that are all just original material. Okay? But uh, in the next episode, I am going to. Uh, my next video, I'm going to. Uh, I have two more videos coming today. One is going to review the newest chapter of Tokyo Guri, the other one is the newest chapter for Hunter x Hunter. Okay? Those two videos are coming today, and maybe also, probably also, uh, part three of the anime review for Soul Eater, okay? But to assume the next video.